First question, what is government? It's one of three human spheres of limited authority. What is government's job? Let's look at Romans 13. You've got your Bible. I hope you do. Romans chapter 13 is where we're going to start. And we're going we're to ask three nature questions. What's the nature of government? And from nature, we see what it's, what it's called to do. So action flows out of identity. Job flows out of nature. We're going to look at the nature of government. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Look how many times the word authority is used. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. What, what can we see true of government from this text? Number one, government is ordained by God as a legitimate institution of authority. So Christians are not scoff laws. We're not libertarian anarchists. We're not, you know, you know don't tread on me, get out of my life, libertarians. No, no, no. We, we acknowledge that the government has a limited, um, ordained obligation to in some ways and at some times, tread on its evil citizens. So we're not scoff laws here, okay? Ordained by God as an institution is government. Let's keep reading. Verse four. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants. Okay? What's he saying here? Number two, we see that governments are empowered by God as his vicegerent. This is a theological phrase I'll explain br briefly. A vicegerent is someone on earth empowered to represent heaven, or someone on earth acting in behalf of God in heaven. That's what a vicegerent is. So when dads Husbands love their wives, and dads exercise discipline on their sons and daughters. They're acting as God's vicegerent, as God's representation on earth to that family. The Bible is very clear. Children, if you rebel against and sin against and disobey your parents, you are disobeying God because they are there as God's vicegerent over your life. Now, that's what Paul's saying here. If you rebel against the authorities that God has put in place, it's as if you are rebelling against God himself. Now, what's inherent in that? Don't miss that those who are in authority as placed there by God are also to be submitted to God themselves. That's the part that, for whatever reason, the American church has failed to understand. It's not obey all authorities everywhere, no matter what they tell you to do. It's you obey authorities when they are acting under the authority of, of God submitted to his moral law. And if they get from outside of that and ask you to do ungodly things, it's the same as if a dad were to ask his kids to help him rob a bank. Children, you have no obligation to obey your dad if he asks you to help him break the law of God. Same with citizens of a nation. If, if those in quote unquote authority move themselves out from underneath God's authority, they have become illegitimate authority and they should not be submitted to, nor honored. They should be confronted and called to repent. But by and large, government as an institution is to act as God's vicegerent, his, rep his representative on the earth. Thirdly, chapter 13, verse 3 and 4, for rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Now, we're in the moral categories here, right? So a government has to be able to define good from evil right from wrong. If they can't, that government is not legitimate because it has no ability to obey God if it cannot define right and wrong. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. Verse four, for the one in authority is God's servant for your good, very key distinction there, but if you do wrong, be afraid for Rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on 
the wrongdoer. Now there we see, we get to the explicit point that God gives governments. They are to be his agents of wrath, which means if you violate the moral law of God and you do so in such a way to bring harm on those in society around you, God has set up governments to hunt you down, check you, and take you out. If government doesn't do that job, it'll be left to its citizens, and then you have a culture of vigilantism with no rule of law and no system of justice to check falsely accused people, and then it's just utter chaos. So God sets up a law and justice system, and we'll look, look next week we'll look at is, is our nation a Christian nation, and I'm going to show you explicitly how many things that have caused our nation to flourish come right from the Bible. But if you don't have a law and justice system that's built on truth and then empowered agents of God, as in the government, to pursue evildoers and bring them to justice, you will have a nation overrun by evil. Which means the, uh, the last nature of government is that they are an agent of God's wrath as a minister of justice. Hey everybody, Pastor Josh here. If you enjoyed that clip, you can check out the full sermon right here.